Yeah, this is Sub Focus, and um, I'm here with Computer Music again to show you, talk about a little bit about uh, drum and bass mix downs, and a little bit about sound creation, and um, you know, starting off with with how to put a beat together, you know, um, how to get that big sound. Well, we need to um, talk a little bit about how to get your um, you know your beat sounding sort of big. Basically, you know, how to, the, and the, the kind of typical layers that you would find, um, you know, in a drum and bass beat pattern. So there's, um, I mean, there's there's lots and lots of different techniques. So I've decided to narrow it down to um, what probably quite a lot of people would like to know is, you know, how to to make a kind of big sounding, very pump, pumping kind of contemporary drum and bass beat. Um, so I've started by um, selecting a few hits from uh, from the Vengeance package, which is a you know it's a series of sample CDs which has fantastic drum hits on it basically. And also, the good thing about doing that is that you guys will have access to to these sounds. You know, it's not like um, whilst most of my drum sounds are sounds that I've spent a long time you know processing and um, and getting right. You know, these are all sounds that you can find. You know, you can buy them on sample CDs and, and work with from there. Okay, so I'm going to go through some um, some drum hits and try and um, show you what I generally look for when I'm putting together a drum and bass beat. It's tricky with uh, with the with the Vengeance hits. They're actually you know uh, bespoke for electro and house and stuff. So generally the kicks are actually a little bit lower than you want for drum and bass. So yeah, here's um, here are a bunch of kicks, and um, I'm just looking through which which one would really sort of. Um, would really see now a lot of these, these ones. In fact, when I'm when I'm doing this, I'll usually actually have one hand on the mouse and one hand actually on my speaker, because I don't get incredible amount of low end from from these speakers and from my setup. I'll do a lot of to actually feel the consistency of the low end. I'll basically kind of pretty much constantly have my hand actually on the speaker. So I'm feeling for for. For a certain amount of weight, but not too much low end as to conflict with the sub. That's the, the kind of crucial decision, and and quite a kind of quite a precise um, top end as well, so that you get a nice kind of click on the top of the drum as well. Um, so going through these here, um, so it hits like that. They've got way too much low end content. Um, you can also take something that is maybe too low and transpose it. That's another way you can you can kind of get around it. So the the kick I've actually ended up going for is um, is on this channel here. I'll just take the effect off that. And what I've done is I've taken um, I'll zoom in the kick here. I've taken the hit and made it quite short, so there's not much of a tail on it. So you're basically just getting the main body of the sound. What I've done to this is I've actually transposed it up to semitones within the sequencer so as to kind of make sure that it's sitting in that right range. So it's quite bouncy sounding um, as a part, you know, it's kind of got quite a thud, but there's not, you're not hearing much of a note. There's, the note is kind of, is, is sort of higher than where the sub will be hitting. Um, then I've kind of brought up a, I've got a frequency analyzer here. Um, I had a look at it and I've ended up taking out a bit of bass actually out of the kick because there's kind of too much there. Um, this kind of thing is it's tricky to to really break down what exactly to look for. It's not a scientific process and generally what I'll do when trying to sort of create a new drum kit would be to you know look through a lot of a lot of kicks and test out a bunch of them against each other. So I've got this one here, and um, I've got one of my favourite pre-process kicks, which I've done, and I've kind of got it up against that, so I can see that it's a fairly similar length. Um, this is my kit here, and then this is the one that I've brought in with, with EQ on it. And you can hear it's kind of fairly similar, you know, it's a bit shorter, the, the top's actually a bit more abrasive, but if you, if you sort of um, take hits that you you already like, you know, you can kind of um, and and sort of reuse them. You can get used to using them, and you end up adding processing to them, and it's 
you sort of make it your own over time. That's what, what I tend to do. Another thing I've done to the, the kick is actually shortened it um, using um, phase system in Cubase, which I use a lot. You select the hit and then you actually kind of drag the, the mouse over to perform the fade. Um, what I've done is to go into the fade editor to not a straight fade, it's like a, it's like a, a curved fade to make it sound a bit more natural. Um, so yeah, I just decided to do that because there was quite a long tail on the hit and I, I think it sounds it sounds a bit better the sort of cleaner it is in the low end, you know, so it's um, it's better to have it slightly shorter there. So um, the next thing I look for is is basically a snare with with quite a lot of, of sort of low mid punch on it, which gives it a real thud when you hear it in the club. I've selected this hit um, here, which is again from the Vengeance pack, so you know anyone can find this if they look through the hits that they've got. I'll show you, uh, I'll, I'll just bring up the folder now just to sort of show you. So, um, yeah, so I was looking through um, snares. Now, I think, uh, you know, in a way, well, it's, it's, it's slightly tricky because you need to kind of, if you're going for that, that big low snare sound, you need to know that you're selecting a sound to start off with that has enough presence in that low area so that you can either bring it out, you know, so you can sort of really bring out that low frequency in it. Um, so I've, I've gone into um, another Vengeance pack and for, for example like a sound like this, is, that's actually, it's got, it's got a fair amount of those and you can kind of feel it. Um, but then a sound obviously like a clap, there's nothing there that you can really boost to, to create that sound. So you've got to start with something that's fairly um, fairly good for, for that in the first place. In fact, generally, generally speaking, as I'm sure many people have said before, you know, getting a, getting a big sound is a lot to do with sound selection. So choosing a good source to start off with makes your job a hell of a lot easier. You know, makes it makes it really possible. So, for instance, a sound like like none of these sounds are particularly appropriate because they don't really have that, that type of weight. And again, this is something that you'll get used to hearing if, you, if you're sort of striving to get that sound. Really, it's a case of, of trial and error and looking through, through sounds that, that fit the range that you're looking for. And again, it's good to, you know, I'll find, I'll find myself doing this when I create beats, you know, just taking one snare in, referencing it against another and seeing which, which one is really filling the kind of frequency range that you're after. So. Um, I've gone for this one as a starting point, um, which I play now, just removing the effects, which is this snare here. Now I've started off by monoing the sound, so there's no kind of weird stereo stuff going on, because this is the, the kind of basis of, um, of your snare here. So yeah, um, I've loaded up the frequency analyzer on the snare, um, and by playing it, you can actually you can see this, but you can hear it as well. It sounds quite hollow, and it's because of the processing that's been done on the sound, there's actually already a great deal of low end in it, um, possibly too much even, and there's a lot of mids scooped out of it. If I just clear this, you can see there's a massive kind of, and you're generally looking for a fairly flat response across the top. So I've, I've sort of got around that problem by basically doing a mid boost to make it sort of, to normalise the hit a bit, so it now sounds like that. I've actually taken out a bit of low end, so it's a bit more sort of, it's a bit more level across the spectrum, but there's still a lot of low punch in there, which you can also feel if you, t if you touch the speakers. The spectrum analyzer now uh, probably doesn't look that different, let's have a look. Yeah, you can see there's a lot more frequency information here. Now the other, the other way to sort of get around that problem, and I often will do this, especially with snares, is add basically other layers. Like I'll probably add, usually I'll add a higher, a, another snare which sits above it frequency wise, which is just adding a bit of width to it. So it's a, I, I probably won't mono this layer. I'll leave it like open, a bit more reverby, so there's a bit more. Um, there's a kind of controlled reverb to it, and then controlling the the actual volume of that second snare is like 
controlling how much difference there is between the levels and the hit, if you see what I mean. This, um, this is a hit I've chosen to layer with it. It's a bit longer, so you get a bit more of a tail on the sound and you get a bit more of a sort of crack at the top. And um, I've also taken this more live snare, which is one of my process ones, to, to add a little bit more mid crunch into the centre. So you, you kind of, after a while, you'll get an idea of the kind of ranges that you might be missing in a beat. And you'll look, and you know, you'll find sounds that, if you, generally by trial and error is probably the best way, that really fill that, those holes in. But I'll try and take, with the actual, the actual main, main body hits, I'll try and leave those so that there's, there's no EQ on the lows of those. So they're kind of very solid in the low. And then the higher hits that I may be looking to fill in some more high frequencies with, maybe give the basic snare a bit more character, it's good to take a bit of lows off them unless they're really adding something low down because you know it will, cl it will clean things up. Especially with kicks, the great problem with layering kicks is that you'll start to get um, phasing between the, the hits. You know, if they're on a similar note, you'll lose a lot of um, you'll lose a lot of power out of a hit if if you're layering too unequed. So I generally use just one kick for the main body, and then I'll take if I'm not happy with the high end of that, I'll probably take another um, kick that I like the sound of, and just use the high end from that to 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 add a bit more crunch to the top. Um, so here, here are my hits on their own. Um, I've arranged them into kind of just a basic pattern. So these are the hits I've got together now. And um, the next step is to, to sort of really work out what you want in between. Now, um, a lot of people with drum and bass obviously use breaks. So there's a lot of um, you know to, to kind of fill. To, to give the drums some groove, you know, to, to kind of have a bit of, of shuffle in between the drums. One technique that I've been using a lot recently, which I, I'd recommend, is using um, uh, basically drum rumplers to, to actually fill in that kind of high energy aspect of the drums. Um, so the, the kind of high, splashy, cymbaly drums, which, which are very common in drum and bass now. So, um, I put together a very basic pattern in addictive drums, which is, is my favourite of these. I've actually modified the, I've just started with the very basic start up patch um, that you get with this. Actually you can get um, a great usable demo of this online as well if you look around, um, which is what turned me on to this, this particular one. So I've started um, by putting in a really simple pattern in there with, with lots of symbols in there just so there's, there's quite a lot of, of high stuff to play with now it's actually um, not EQ'd at this stage yeah so I'm going to start by taking a little bit out of the bottom of that this is to you know basically so to ensure that your low hits are as clean as possible because they're just the low end is now just the the actual main hits that I've, I've started off with. The other thing I've chosen to do with this is to actually use this plugin, um, which is by um, Brainworks, and I've taken just the mono signal from from the drum so that there's no sort of weird stereo stuff going on. Um, the way a lot of these plugins work is they're kind of it's 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 mixed as a, as you would you know as like a drum kit you know would be mic so there's there's often a lot of mad stereo stuff going on, which is often not what you want for dance music and it generally doesn't cut very well a lot of very wide stereo stuff, so I've opted to to just use the mono signal from that. Um, now if I run it alongside these beats, the uh, hits I've got already. Sounds okay, but sounds fairly sounds fairly standard. Now, one trick I use a lot, and uh, this is um, this this thing is really good for getting a, a kind of a, an an idea of like perceived sort of pumpingness in the beat, which is it's very similar to, to side chain, but I actually use a lot of volume automation on beats like this. So I've been using a uh, Camel Fat. Which is a filter plugin, but you can actually um, just root one of the LFOs, which is tempo sig 
um, synced to quarters on the synthesizer on the um, sequencer. I've routed the master volume to the to the LFO, so it's just it's just kind of ramping up the volume after every every beat of the bar, um, and it makes the beat sit in such a way that that really changes this whole sound of it. So it's automatically the main hits are the main become the main transients that are coming through and the rest of the beat is like is kind of pumping around it and it sounds much more controlled. On its own you can hear it's like it's kind of moving in and out volume wise. If you look at the if you take the volume of the track, it's it's kind of going up and down very quickly. Um, and it just helps the you know the massive hits to really gel with this layer and kind of gives it some some kind of added uh, you know kind of pump to the to the whole rhythm section. So um, the next thing I've decided to do because the um, the hats are, are quite loose on this thing, I've decided to actually use um, D Blue Glitch, which is a plugin I really like, for a bit of um, for a very slight gating. If you solo the, um, it's number seven. It's called uh, Gator, and it's actually performing like I'll, I'll, sh I'll sweep across it to show you what it's doing. So it's cutting the audio like on eights, and then I've increased the length so the cuts are only very very subtle. But it means that there's a slight, um, the the subtle, you know, the subtle syncopation in that layer, which means that it's not just a sort of wash of sort of unrhythmic kind of symbols. It just gives it a little bit more rhythm to that part, which kind of helps helps increase like the definition in the whole rhythm part. I actually ended up putting another um, another Camel Fat plugin, doing a slightly different um, pattern on the volume LFO, just to give it a bit more movement. And um, obviously, again, there's the stereo thing there. So the next thing I've done is actually added um, this. Some, this is something that is probably not immediately obvious to most people who listen to drum and bass tune, but it really helps the. I find it's the type of layer that really helps get get a bit of groove. Is actually have like a shaker part on there. So I've got this is this is one shaker that I use. Um, this is one of a few pre-processed ones I've done. It's quite wide sounding, and it just adds a little bit more high definition and a bit of groove in the whole part. So I just oh yeah, you can really hear it there. And actually having a shaker instead of hats is often a bit more effective in getting that real that sort of slightly off kind of groove to you know. It helps it not sound too sort of military, too straight. So there's that layer now, and um, I've also added in some straight hi hats, um, which are also from the Vengeance CDs. But generally, it's it's down to taste what kind of hi hat you choose, and it's it's generally easier to to find good ones than than kicks and snares. Um, I generally go for quite sort of live sounding ones and ones that, that aren't too, you know, be careful of choosing something that's very, very, either very, very precise sounding or very, very um, transienty or very kind of, or too much high frequency. You know, you want something, I generally go for stuff um, that's got quite a lot of mids in just to basically give, it's, it's, all, it's almost like just to give it a bit more sort of definition and something to hold on to when you're actually maybe mixing in a club. So there's this layer as well, which is mixed quite low actually. But it just gives a bit more, slightly more definition on the, on the transients of the hits. So there's, there's very stuff I can do to this now. I can take out the, the symbols in there. Now the um, the next thing I decided to do, which is use a layer that that masses and masses of drum and bass tunes have used over the years, which is um, an Amen break, which is a classic old funk break. Um, and uh, I've got a, a process version here of of an Amen, which I've just 
basically put a loop of over the whole drums. I've got a whole bunch of different different amens that I've that I processed over the years, and it's a really handy layer because it basically it's it's got quite a wide sort of frequency range in the, in the high end, and it's not it's generally quite. Um, it's quite sort of soft sounding in a way, so it's great at filling up that kind of that that sort of top to mid to top sort of area of the beat. Um, so I've just got a pattern here, which I've started off by EQing and just basically taken out a lot of the very low end. And I've also put another volume automation on it from Camel Fat. So as to this, but this one's actually um, chopping it up. So on on every eighth division, um, the volume's going down very slightly. So it's just making it sound more distinct each hit. So you see what that sounds like in the mix. I just add in my top. Play around with various different different things, you know, different patterns within the, the camel for that thing. You go for something that's more side chainy sounding, like like this, for example. So that would get a certain feel. You can take it off totally. You you find that actually often um, in a lot of drum and bass, actually, you find that the breaks used aren't necessarily Performing the same pattern as um, as what the beat is doing. So, for example, this amen is is actually um, the the snares are actually hitting on the first snare of the bar and the second kick of the bar rather than the set on the second snare, and it just adds a slightly different groove to it, you know. And it's just just you know, there's no hard and fast rules how you cut it up, but it just um, Adding adding breaks in tends to really fill that kind of that mid range gap and actually allows you to give it some kind of you know give the beat a bit more a bit more funk I guess so the, these are I'd say generally from talking to other people these are the main sorts of layers that people will use obviously the breaks used will vary and the type of hits but these are all the things that you need to kind of really get sorted are you know so that you're I think usually it's, it's probably best to start with the hits. Um, Play around with various different sounds, and then start adding uh, breaks, and then think about sort of high ends breaks that will fill out the high end and sort of simply breaks, and then you know things like hi hats and shakers, and that's that's generally what makes it up. Um, and you you get a really clean sound by a making sure that the the low end's only coming from very few elements of the beat, so like the kicks, and the snares. And uh, you know, possibly, you know, have one of your breaks slightly keep keep a bit more low in one of the breaks to give it a bit more character. Um, but generally, it helps to have you know the the, lo the real low lows only just coming from the main hits of the sound. Um, also, like I was demonstrating, that kind of whole side chaining or volume fade technique really helps to make the whole beat sound big because it's it's you know it's kind of when the kick's playing, nothing else is, and when the Snare's playing, nothing else is, and then in between, the rest of the stuff rushes in in between. You know. It's a classic technique. I mean, 